Hello everyone and welcome to another Steam Next Fest video and in this one we're checking out Super Fantasy Kingdom. This is the second game that I mentioned uh, when I was talking about Blacksmith Master. This is the second game that Hooded Horse very kindly gave me access to ahead of time. Uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to get around to completing this one quite in time to get it uh, get it out uh, at the start of the Next Fest extravaganza this week. But I have spent a considerable amount of time on this video because I actually already recorded a video for this a few days ago and then suddenly realized that actually I didn't really give this uh, enough time to flesh this out and really get a feel for it so what I've done is I've effectively come back to it now having played this now as you will be able to see here for four just over four hours I've put into this demo and effectively I needed to do that because I needed to give you guys a bit of a feel for what this game can offer because the grind is a little on the slow side in my personal opinion now you can see here this will be we're about to go into my 12th cycle or my 12th run on the game uh, my record is 57 um i'm gonna try and remember what that represents i can't remember what the name of it is um we've done 82 days in game and we've killed three and almost three and a half thousand monsters uh, you can also see that i've used my uh points my crystals whatever they again whatever the uh, uh thing is called there again are they crystals i'm not sure but we've upgraded a whole bunch of stuff from damage and health and shield so this is what you can do right if you've played games like deep rock galactic survivor or yet another zombie survivors those sorts of games or vampire survivors you'll probably be familiar with these concepts where you run the game multiple times and each time you can come back and you can upgrade things to potentially make your next run a bit easier and go deeper into the game before you have to either concede or you get killed or whatever so we're going to go straight in one of the things i really like about this game is the sort of the base building elements that this comes with this so we'll run we'll run through a few things let me just pause things here uh, now you will see at the top i've started with two workers i've started with four wood three stone two ore, three wheat um and yeah so effectively all of those things are buffed i don't think i started with almost all any of that other than maybe i think i started with like two wood or maybe three wood uh we've also got two in reserve as well all of these things you'll see around you can't actually see them because i've clicked on them and i've sort of taken the bonuses already but you can actually click on these things and spend your shards there you go that's what the currency is called you can spend your shards and you can actually use it to buy permanent resource boosts to start uh, your next game off uh, and these are little plots and again when you first play the game this will be considerably smaller i've expanded this using the little button up here which you'll unlock after about the third or the fourth day glory that's the other resource um and uh, yeah we we basically micromanage our little villagers to try and get the resources and build stuff um and up here is where the defense happens so up here is where all the monsters are going to spawn in waves each day uh, we try and kill them with the uh, with the heroes that we've got, or our hero, our guardian, which is called uh, Selene. And of course, we can recruit other people along the way and other mythical beasts along the way. So let's get cracking them. Here comes our king of our village. Um, it should be known that I, even though I have spent four hours on this, there is every chance that somebody who's a little bit more familiar with these types of games potentially, or is just frankly better, may be able to do a better job. Um, of getting further into this game with the progression than I have done in the four hours. But the one thing that you will always need to do whenever you're coming back to this game and you've got all these empty plots here ready to put things like you have to put your tavern down first. Placement of your buildings is very important because the, your villagers do have to walk off to go and get resources and these resources that spawn on the inside of this forest are random. So even though you're likely to see all the same resources you'll always have ore you'll always have berries and wood and stone i still don't actually know what this is yet um they will be in different places so it is important to put your things in the correct locations so for example i can see all of these berry bushes down this end and there's only a couple up here so it probably makes sense to build my tavern here which is where the uh the gathering of those berries takes place and you can use your mouse wheel go up and down you can see there that i'm assigning workers to it or you can click on it and assign a gatherer that way and it will tell you what we've got we've even got a fish um in here uh, now in the demo i think we can only perhaps to 14 days i think my record is something maybe like 13 maybe i've even got to the 14th day but then died without completing it um but you have to get food to feed your uh, your heroes your guardian celine in this case doesn't require any food at the end of each day however 
once you start recruiting other heroes, they will require feeding. And every time you give them food, if they've died during the battle, but you've managed to win the battle, then the food replenishes their health and they come back the next day. If they haven't died and they successfully won the day, uh, depending on what food you give them, it will advance their XP. Now, berries is the most basic resource. It will only advance them one XP. Whereas the other foods here, bread, for example, I think goes up three. Raw meat, maybe two. I'm not sure what fish does, but yeah, I think the good meat here, the burger looking thing, I think that goes up even more. Um, so yeah, so just bearing in mind that the better food that you give your heroes, the quicker they will rank up and the more uh, strength and other boosts in stats that they will get. Um, so let's continue on. So we've got our we've got our tavern down here. That's one worker there. Uh, next, just looking around. Um, I think we probably want to place the lumber yard there. Irritatingly, all the stone is really down here. There's a bit of stone over here, I guess. So we probably want to build the quarry there. So lumber yard and quarry. So that's kind of the crux of where you want to start. Um, I will always look to uh, try and get the the lumber quickly because once you get to four wood up the top here, you can go on one of these smaller plots and you can buy a house which gives you more workers. As you can see, our little people will go off and they will start gathering. And then a little donkey, little horse, come and gathers up the resources that are brought back to the supply and takes them there. And once you get to midday, you don't get long. You, you do not get long in this game. Uh, you get to this point and you start getting little monsters that will attack. And you get a wide variety of monsters that will come, all offering different styles of attack and everything else. Um, and you must basically defend the uh, the castle. Now, at the moment, we've only got this. This is like a roaming shield, which will just push them back if they get close. I've already got enough stone to get myself a swordsman, which I can throw in here. Uh, you can see on the right-hand side here, this is shards, coins, faith, and recruitment XP bonuses. Um, at the moment, I've only got 10 coins, so that's the only spot I can put. So I'm bringing him off the bench. Um, but while we're doing this, our king will be walking around every building here and collecting things. So if he goes into there, you can see he's collected two coins. And that goes into our little stockpile there. So that's going on all the time. Uh, realistically, in the first couple of days, certainly after having played a few hours and you've, you've built up enough strength and you've leveled your guy up quite significantly, um, these first few waves are going to be fairly straightforward. Your guy will actually get levels as he goes through. His XP will go up and he'll begin to upgrade himself. Um, and there are other ways in which you can upgrade him as well via faith and the church and everything else in between. Uh, so, uh, we need to get somebody on, on that. Uh, everyone, it looks like they're going to bed. We've got eight meals already. We've got eight berries, I'm assuming that is. Oh, seven and one fish. And nobody in the quarry at the moment. So anyway, we are almost done. Uh, there we go. We have defeated all evil. So here's the little bit in between. You can see all, that's all of our food up the top. Now watch, so he will probably be given the fish because I think it goes in order of the best food that you get. So it will give you a little breakdown of what you've done throughout the day. And here you go. So your heroes enter the tavern in a random order. They'll always pick the food most valuable to them. Now this does become a little bit frustrating because in my experience so far, making other types of food is actually quite difficult in this demo. Um, it's obviously something that's going to get easier over time as you upgrade and, and whatnot. The problem is, is that I don't know whether it's deliberate or not, but every time one of my heroes dies or falls on the battlefield and you come back here after, you know, you manage to win the day with your remaining heroes, he comes back in here first and he takes the bread. Now, the problem is, is that bread, as you can see here, gives you three XP. He doesn't get any XP from doing that. He only uses the food to replenish his health. So the XP is wasted. That boost in, in production or boost in his experience is wasted. And it does take a fair amount of effort with not many workers to get bread made. So that's a little bit frustrating. But in this case, he is going to take the fish. He'll get himself two XP. He'll go and have himself a seat. You click through. Then they go to sleep. And there you can see his experience goes up. When he hits to three, he levels up and all his stats improve. And each day you'll get your or most days you'll get a little event like this where people will uh, people will come along. And in this one, in day two, you always get another option. Uh, there are various different heroes that appear. I've seen probably six or seven, I'm gonna say. And you can see what type of units they are. So the shaman is a is a tank. 
um, lots of mana, lots of electric uh, abilities. The lizard poisons its foes, and this one is just a straight up, just hit you in the face type guy. Half man, half goat. Um, I'm going to go with the shaman. I don't actually think I've used this one yet. I'm not sure what this little symbol up in the top right here means. Maybe it means he can go into a tower or something. Uh, but as you can see, he's on the bench until I move him into there. If you hover over, it gives you their arc of effectiveness. So he's very good at, at range, but once they get inside that range, he is useless. So you need people around him to help him out. Uh, right, so I'm just going to pause back to here again. So we've got our four wood, which means we can get ourselves a house, which gets us another worker. Um... Get cracking on the stone, please. In fact, I'm going to get two people on the stone. And away we go. Uh, quick look over here. So again, this these paths, um, these were basically made by me. So when you, I'll probably, I'll show you again in a moment. When you get the ability to get to this, uh, you can use uh, a, a stone to create the road. You have to have enough um, uh, glory to be able to expand the road. Uh, but once you do, you can expand over here and you can start getting to over here where you get to experience little bonuses, little things you can hire other people. So there's a monk there. Um, this is where you can get extra bonuses for the next uh, for the next days or for the next cycles. Some of them are quite expensive. I suspect that they're that expensive for the demo purposes only um, and that they don't want you to go too crazy and really start experiencing the full game. That They're only giving you a, a taster here. Um, and in this one, a new hunting ground. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We can get some faith of that. So yeah, so that in effect is the game. That is what we're doing. We have got a little outpost over here that we can use. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. So what we're going to focus on at the moment here, um, we do need to get our storage up, which we will do. Because every time you want to build another house, it doubles the cost in wood. So it's four wood to build the first one. It is now eight. Quite a significant leap in cost. Uh, we're getting lots of stone in the storage over there. So next thing we probably want to look at getting... Um, what do we want? Do we want to get probably a sawmill? Maybe the next thing? Uh, I've never... I've not actually used a siege camp just yet. Or a stable. But the trouble is I've only got a certain number of large plots. Right, so here you go. So you can do reclaim. So you can see these arrows here. So this tells you, in order to go down here, I need to get to 250 glory on this run. And I don't think I've got to higher than about 60, something around that mark. So, yeah, this is why I'm not uh, I'm not able to do these ones yet. But they do stay. So once you reclaim that part of the kingdom, as it's called, it will stick around. You don't have to do it again the next on the next playthrough. So we're gathering nicely here. Everybody is chipping in. We've still got plenty of, of food at the moment. I th Yeah, I think I'm going to go sawmill next. The gold mine definitely needs to be over here because there's a lot of gold over that side. So we need planks for that. So yeah, definitely the sawmill I think is next. There you go. So we're going to put the sawmill there. So they will convert wood into, into boards. And we've also got, uh, we can go a windmill with some flour as well if we want to. Or we can just quickly upgrade the storage here and now. I don't think we need to worry about that just for the moment. There we go. Are we done? A few more. A few more left over. We can speed things along a little bit. As the day goes on or the evening goes on, if it gets into real late, they go into full rage mode, as you saw where they highlighted in red there. And they will, um, they will full send at you. So there we go. So day 10 gives you, again, a breakdown of what's going on. The swordsman didn't do anything because they never got close enough. But thanks to the fact that he is about to go and eat a berry, which always leaves people unsatisfied, apparently, uh, he will he will now level up. And you will see, you can see he's now onto 7, 9, and 31 on his stats. There we go. On to day 3. We have a pirate ship. Uh, 28 gold, and he'll give me a wheat. We don't have any... Thing like that at the moment. Okay, so... Uh, and also worth, worth noting as well, so if I was to do that and take one off, which leaves one worker currently not doing anything, I believe. 
uh, when he comes back from delivering his stone, he will finish his duty there. So when we've got one less, they become gather, uh, um, collectors or uh, transportation people. So rather than just relying on the donkey to do everything, he will then go and lend a hand and start moving things around as well. So we're now at eight stones. So what we could do if we really wanted to is actually upgrade our guy here. But I think we're okay for the moment. Um, do we want to go gold mine next? We probably do. So we're going to stick somebody in the sawmill. And off he comes. You will see that they do change their attire when you give them different jobs to do. Everything's looking nice and calm up there. And he will start converting that into that. And then we can start getting some ore produced. Uh, we can probably look to get... Uh, no, we're going to wait. We're going to... Oh, we can. We can afford both because it's four and three. So we can put a, a farm in there. Even though all the stuff is down the bottom, which is a bit of a pain in the ass. But once we get one more block, we have actually got the blocks made. We just need uh, our donkey to come and get it. You've got to be careful as well, because they do seem to go through making the uh, the planks an awful lot quicker than they, uh, than they collect wood. So just be a little bit wary of that. Um, okay, it looks like they've all finished for the day. They've all gone back to their homes. Just got to wrap things up here. There we go. All good. I'm just going to skip through all this as they eat their berries. Everybody goes up. If they don't get fed, other than not losing their or losing their XP, uh, I don't think much else changes, but I could be I could be wrong in that. Um, from time to time, you will see something in here which almost looks like a happiness meter, but I'm not entirely sure that actually affects anything. I could be wrong again on that, but I don't believe it does. Right, gold mine goes in. Uh, next thing to work on, I think, will be to get to eight wood. So we are going to uh, see what we can do to try and bring that up. We're also going to need to get some uh, more food fairly quickly. So I'll put somebody on that and I'll, I'll allow the game to sort of work out its own priority list. Um, we can slow down the stone and get somebody straight into there. Again, to speed things up. You can see that already the variety of enemies is, is changing fairly considerably. I believe we should be we should be okay. I don't think these are going to cause any problems for the moment. They're getting reasonably close. And sooner or later this uh, this guy is going to stop becoming useful. But our arrows from um, uh, from Celine are very, very good. And they're very, very powerful at close range. It has this sort of like attack where you can see that just sort of fires them out in random areas. But once they get close enough, I believe she sort of like locks on and they start hitting directly on targets and they hit pretty hard okay so now they get now they get aggressive now they get super aggressive they get faster they come at you harder so it's really important to clear away as many of the enemies as humanly possible especially in the later rounds because they do yeah they do run at you very very quickly and as you see he did get a little bit of a hit um but didn't actually do any uh, damage other than one health which is absolutely fine Right, so they will eat some more stuff. So our shaman goes up a level. Magic, look at that. Seven, seven, and a three. No shield on the shaman, which is worrying. So if he gets hit, it instantly goes into health or damages the health. Right, here we go. So irritatingly, later in the game, later in the playthrough, there will be an option to buy another hero, but it always costs two. I don't have enough here, irritatingly, to do that. So... Do I want to spend the ore just to get one gold or spend the wood? Mm, I'll take I'll take the one. Let's get ourselves another worker. We will need a well as well for our um for our bakery at some point, so let's get that. So yeah, lots of spending going on at the moment. 
berries being collected. So we want to try and get a little stockpile of that before things go on much further. How are we doing in here? So we could look to upgrade storage. We can also do, uh, build some walls as well, which gives all of our heroes a boost. Um, what does it cost to hire these guys? A so crossbowman we need. We could look to get him actually in a moment. So we can get him now. Let's get a crossbowman in because the earlier you get these guys, the... Um, if I do that, can I swap them around? Yeah, like that. So I have him at the front. Um, the earlier you get these heroes in, they get to do some damage in the earlier rounds when it's not quite so heavy and they can start to level up before you get to the more difficult ones. So if we go here as well, I need one more uh, hay or gra is it grain wheat and I can get the monk and get him involved as well and get him leveled up. And we can have five heroes nice and early before things get too crazy with the monsters that attack us. It's just a shame that I'm not going to be able to get unless... I get a smelter. But in order to do that, I'm going to have to upgrade the storage in the first place. But I feel like actually getting getting a windmill and getting a bakery is more important. Trouble is now, I can't get any more workers because it's 16. So four is kind of where I live and die now. Which is my one small criticism of this game is I do feel like it is... I, I'm sure there's some balancing that will be done ahead of release, but I do feel like that the number of workers that you can get access to really hits a wall. And it does feel like in the early game, especially in the first half a dozen runs I was playing, it's a bit of a slog to keep almost keep doing the exact same thing, dying at almost the exact same moments, not really progressing, just to get enough shards to start unlocking stuff and hope that you can get an extra day or two here and there. It just feels a little slow. So here's, this is going to be a little bit of a test. We've got quite a lot of enemies out here that are all fully enraged. We've got several... We've got three, in fact, ranged units, effectively. And one swordsman that can help protect if they get uh, if they get too close. There you go. That was the swordsman taking a hit there. So we should be okay. Yeah, we're going to be... I think we're going to be comfortably okay, actually. There we go. Lovely old job. We've got 10 meals as well, so we've got plenty of food to feed everybody. To feed our three, currently three heroes. Right, into day six. And here we go. Who are you? I think this is where they offer me another hero, but I'm not going to be able to do one. What? Mm. Yeah, and look, they all cost two, which is, which is a real shame. I'd love to potentially get either the Frost Mage or the Cyclops, but unfortunately... I can't do it. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to send him on his way. Uh, what's the pirate offering me? Uh, yeah, we'll take another wood for the, for the gold. Uh, right, so I'm just going to pause for a second here. What is it that we are aiming for here? So bakery, I think, is the next thing, but we need flour in order to do that. And um, we also probably need to think about upgrading our storage. Because we might be able to get to a point where we can put, get another worker in if we're quick. Before the outside world gets too bad. What day are we on? I think it was six, did it, did, it, did it say? So we should be in a position where we can last several more days yet before it gets too mad. I'm hoping. Not getting that second hero, though, is a kick in the teeth. And as you can see, the berry bushes are also, they're finite, so we won't have access to the berry bushes forever. Uh, right, so we can now get... Where's the monk? Let's get our warrior monk involved. Uh, we haven't got... Have we not got enough? We have got just enough to throw him in. He's in a bit of an odd position. I'd kind of like to have him a little bit further forward. Okay, so it's another hero, though. So that's five heroes out there, effectively. Uh, right, how much wood we got there? We've got quite quite the surplus of wood. So let's take one away from you. Um, what we got here? So what do we need for the bakery? We got... So it's stone we need. So go back onto collecting stone, please. 
In fact, let's take both of the people off of the wood cutting just for the moment and get them into stone cutting. One thing you can do as well is you can upgrade your houses to allow for more workers with a cost of four ore each time, which is doable, but you need a stone road to upgrade. And the only way you get stone roads is you upgrade here using five ore to get stone roads. And then he does each individual section of path for one stone as he upgrades it to stone. And it is an incredibly long process. And frankly, I don't have enough time to do that before I die up here. So that is, again, a slight frustration. It's this element of things just taking a little bit too long at times to happen. Um, but I would say that I'm, re I'm really enjoying this game. I, I It's got that one more game... You know, I, I just want to play one more game kind of vibe to it. And I often found myself yesterday frustrated that I died, but then just, oh, come on, I need to get back. I can do, I can do that wave if I just do this slightly differently. So it's um, it has been enjoyable. I think there's a huge amount of potential with this game. I love the element. All the, all the roguelike games that I've played, things like um, uh, Deep Rock Galactic Survivor and yet another Zombie Survivors, they're fantastic games. They're a lot of fun. They're very relaxing to play. But this one with the sort of the addition of the sort of base building aspect of it and resource management and micromanaging of your uh, villages is a really neat little addition to the game. Um, as our swordsman goes up now to level three, his shield now, he is becoming quite the um, uh, the frontline foot soldier. If he, takes a, if he can tank a lot of the damage, he can protect the guys behind. And if we can get to eight stone, we can upgrade him further there as well. We have now got people, two people doing stone. We've got so much wood over there that we can't actually put into there. Uh, let's start trying to get some of this uh, wheat made into uh, flour as well. I find that um, if you just allow these ones to, to have the game prioritized for you, that the game does a reasonable job in uh, allowing workers to float between the two as we get our first mini boss, the Goblin King. In theory, we sh with, with five heroes, we, we should be able to dispense of him pretty quickly, especially as almost all of my units are ranged. This guy is not really a problem. The little goblins he lets off are absolutely of no problem, unless they all go red at night and go into full rage mode. Then it's a problem. But as you can see, we make short work of him. And we get a little bonus for it as well. Some gold coins. And uh, what are we going to get here? So that's critical chance, I think, plus 25% to critical chance. Um, everybody gets 100%, I think that's like wind pushback um, against targets who have got taunt. Or we just give everyone 10% better shields. I think I'm going to give them all critical chance. 25% critical chance against for everybody. Was that everybody that got that? Or was it just my guy? I think it's just my guy that gets that. Okay, right. Well, that, that would have changed my uh, thinking potentially if I knew it was just upgrades from my person but never mind uh right how are we doing here so we're getting some stone we're also getting some flour coming in which is great uh we can now upgrade storage which means all that wood can come across can i get to 16 wood i don't think i've ever got that high on wood got quite a lot of ore let's take him off of uh ore for the moment since we've got four four of that If we can get to 16 wood, I don't actually think we need stone for the moment. Get them, get back onto, onto wood, because if we can get to 16 wood and then get to five more wood um, so that we can then convert that all into boards and get walls, we can give everyone a, bo a boost here. And then the, the one after that is that becomes stone walls, which gives them yet another boost. Maybe. Is this the run? This is going quite well. Is this the run that I complete this demo? This is going... Quite well at the moment. We've got to be a little bit careful on food because we've only got one berry left now. Crossbowman goes up to level two. On to day eight. We do need someone to do that. Let's bring that person off of the grain and get them doing some berry picking. There's not many berries left to pick. Four? Yeah, four. I don't know if they regrow or not. I'm not entirely sure. 
I don't know whether you just got to get to the point because effectively you, you to make, keep making food, you've got to upgrade your farm to have a grower and he puts hay around um, or wheat in the ground, sorry. And then you can use that to feed people on the ongoing basis. But fi making five bread every turn or four bread in this case is quite a tall ask. So here we go. Next wave of people coming through. We can also do this. If we wanted to, we can challenge the mini boss who's got... 250 health and if we do that we get a delivery of wheat every morning one uh, via a caravan if we can defeat him the problem is is that he can be quite the tank 250 health actually doesn't seem a huge amount when you consider how much damage you're doing each time but unless you kill him quickly it he causes a problem a big problem So where are we at? 14 wood. Come on, get one. That's 15 wood inside. There's still three wood there. Is that 16 wood? Did somebody just bring a wood into there? Oh, no. Yeah, th there's another thing they can potentially do. Sometimes your workers will go through the castle, through the keep, to take the resource to there to only then have it come back again. Which seems a bit strange. There we go. Right, that, I think that's the first time I've ever got five workers. That is, uh, that's pretty huge. Right, we've got ourselves enough. I think the berry bushes may recover, you know, look, because the bush is still there. It just, it's been picked. So I think the berries will regrow. That is, that is good, as they're getting a little too close to cut for comfort here. Come on, lads. Yeah, look at my swordsman. Look at his tank. Look at his shield, the little blue line. He tanked several hits there. That was very, very good from him. If we can get that stone up to eight as well in this next day. We can potentially um, get him leveled up. Uh, right, it's Monk and the uh, Shaman go up in levels. This is going well. This is going well, everybody. Who are you? The Witch. Uh, ah, we can hire someone using shards. I forgot about this. Um, do we want to get... Mm -mm -mm -mm. I've already got that, right? Or is this just a... Oh, wait, this is a permanently unlock a... Pa I was just about to say, I've got all of these. Permanently unlock a passive ability. Conjures the spirit of Doe to take hits. Uh, plus 10 on shield to the crossbowman. Apply rejuvenate. I don't know what rejuvenate does. Let's give it to the shaman. So what does he do? Continuously drains health of the target to heal the conjured spirit. Who's the conjured spirit? Is he talking about himself? Or is he talking about our our leader, our guardian? It doesn't actually tell me what that does, but okay. It sounds cool. Let's let's just leave it at that. Right, pirates, what are you giving me? One ore. Don't think we need an ore, so we'll leave that be for the time being. Right, so he's taking stuff into there. That's good. Um, right, we have five. What were we, what were what was it we was we were going to upgrade? It's probably the f how much hay have we got out there? Not much. We haven't got five of those to upgrade anyway. That can't be upgraded. That can't be upgraded. I have never done this, so I don't know what that does. The geologist, someone may be able to tell me. We can use the forester to grow new trees with five of that. We can also look to repair the church and get some bonuses to uh, to our people up there as well. That's definitely something we can look to do. I think we may need to get the forester at some point as well, because I don't think you can harvest these trees here. It's only the ones that kind of stand out, like this one and this one. See the different shapes of the trees? It's those ones that you can harvest. So we are, I think, going to need to do that anyway. Right, take that off. Go and start collecting some stone, please. Uh, right. There's our walls. Everyone gets a everyone gets a little stat boost at the top there. If we can get a few more stone in, we can also give our um, swordsman yet another boost. Things are going well. We've got so much flour. My God, we haven't done the bakery yet, have we? That was one thing we were going to do. 
Do we do that now? Yes, let's do that now. Start baking bread, please. And take that off as well. We've got a couple of... We've got some good amount of wood planks. If we can get one more person in the wood again, that would be good. So we've taken a bit of a hit, but hopefully we can recover this stone quickly. There it is now. Night. So, oh, they are getting a little bit too close for comfort. It looks like some of them kind of went around my swordsman there, but we have finally got rid of them all, other than this guy here who's very much taking his time and coming forward. There we go. So it was a little bit too close for comfort that time. We've also run out of food again. And nobody leveling up on this occasion. Right, so just quickly looking around here as we pause. We've only got two berries. So that will give us three. So we need to make one loaf of bread in this uh, in this run. Where did all of our flour go, by the way? I'm sure we had seven. I'm going to look back on the... Uh, on the edit when I'm editing that. I am certain we went at the end of that day with seven flour. Who's the flour thief? Right, what do we want here? Five. Okay, we, we'll, we'll do... Uh, if we can get the stone in. Oh, the horse has to take it. The donkey has to take it all the way to the tavern to store it. We can do that. Come on, come back and get one more stone. That's it. That's good. We can get the the stone wall upgrade. Again, we're delaying the upgrade on the swordsman, but by doing this, everybody gets a boost. Everybody gets an upgrade if we do it like that. Okay, we're going. We're we're doing okay at the moment. I'm watching keenly here as, as things going going along. Um, right, what do we want to do? Do we want to? We can repair the church actually and use the faith we've collected. Uh, so our guardian gets an upgrade. Uh, attacks once more, applying radiance to a target with freeze deals that. Attacks pierce one, increases effect of freeze by ten percent. Um. Okay, we'll do that one because it decreases magical defense by 20% if he hits someone and we've got This guy here our shaman who does who does magic damage so that may help that person do some more damage Okay, we're, we're, we're doing well again here. This is this is not going badly at all There is about to be a lot of angry monsters though. that are all gonna start charging in a moment this is where it can quickly become quite overwhelming. None of our heroes have taken any hits just yet. Although the monk could be about to drop. He monk, the monk drops. And this is where it would be. If we can make it through this, it's going to be really interesting to see whether the monk goes into the tavern first and steals the bread. How many bread have we got? We've got two bread. So somebody is going to get a boost. But because we've survived the wave, even though we lost the monk in that one, he will come back in here. He does come in first. So that's something I think they need to sort. I think for the purposes of rejuvenating your heroes, they should take the least important. If, if all of the food has the same effect and brings their health back up to, you know, better levels, then they should take the lowest one. They shouldn't steal the best food, which is what he's going to do. Watch, he'll take the bread. There you go. Look, he takes bread. There's no way. Did he take two bread? No, he didn't. The uh, swordsman took the other one. So, yeah, he eats that. You can watch this little thing here, and it'll actually give you a little bit more of a graphical representation of, uh, of upgrades when they eat, if they do hit a level up like that. But our swordsman's now at level four. His, his shield is becoming... That is game-changing, potentially. That is a huge buff that he is getting from that.
And then we've got some garden gnomes coming. Uh, oh, look. Do we want two trees or do we want some more? I think we probably want to spend a berry and get some more hay, you know. There you go. Look, and now five more hay spawns in, which is very, very nice. I still don't know what these things are here. Yeah, I, d I don't know what they are. <laughs> uh, one other thing I've not done actually is this. I've not done the, the gate to the tower. I don't know what that does. Does it mean you can put your heroes inside the tower and they do more damage? Maybe we, maybe we experiment with that. Let's... Let's get some boards on the go. Do we risk this guy to get a delivery of grain every day? I do you know what? I don't think we do. Because he gets so close and he comes in, he does 999 damage as well. So he literally one hit kills you. Uh, our Guardian is now at level 6. So Selene is getting pretty strong. Much bread is being made as well, which is good. So also, there's lots of shards being... Acquired here, which is nice. Yeah, this is going well. This this particular raid so far is going well, but it will probably uh, begin to get pretty crazy pretty quickly. Also got an awful lot of gold to spend. Here we go. Moonrise. Monsters get angry. Here they come. Can we... What is this thing here? And Monk goes down again, which means he's going to take the damn bread again. What was that little deer thing there? Was that something that the Shaman has? Hmm. Okay, right. So Swordsman had the bread again. So he goes up, but the Monk has leveled up again. So he has a little bit more health. Uh, sorry, that's the, um, the Crossbowman. Yeah, this is irritating with the Monk because he is... He's getting, he's getting the beats at the moment, which means he's not getting any XP to level up. I can level him up myself. You can click on him and upgrade him yourself by clicking on stuff. Um, but unfortunately, I can't do it. I can upgrade the swordsman though, so he's now even stronger. He has sixty-two shield. Should we risk this just for the? All right, for the sake of this video, let's risk it. But I probably wouldn't do this normally. Uh, what day are we on? Does it tell us what day? Day 12. I think this is about where I got to before, you know. I don't think I've got much further than this. But equally, I don't think I've ever been in quite such a strong position. I, I think, have I ever had a fifth hero? Maybe. Um, yeah, the Conjured Spirit. Maybe that's what that is. There we go. So here comes this thing. Well, the good thing is, because we've done it early, he comes in now... So hopefully with enough targeted attacks on him, we can bring him down before he gets to us. I mean, that's more than 250, isn't it? Surely. There he is. He's gone. Okay, good. Uh, right, so we've got seven planks. So let's do a gate. What does that do? Nothing by the look of it. Does it just mean... Oh, we can bring them... Okay, so we can... Can't do it now. We can actually put them on the battlements. Okay, that's, uh, that changes things a little bit. But we're at the point now where if we can get past this one, I think my next... Yeah, this one here. Look, I can go out here. If I complete this level, I can actually go out from the side of the castle now and expand for the first time out to the right-hand side. So that tells you then, I don't think I've ever got this far, because you get the same glory for completing the waves each time. So this tells you that actually this is as far as I've got before. I haven't got past level 12. 
Do we want a stone for 33? Yeah, go on then. But yeah, this is this is going okay at the moment. These snakes are a pain in the ass, though. I remember these things. And here they all come in one go. Yeah, they do fire damage as well, which is really irritating. Come on, swordsman. Tank everything. Tank everything. Tank everything. He's doing so well. Yes. Wow, we did it. That's amazing. Right, so now we're we're into uncharted territory now. How much bread have we got? We've got like four loaves of bread? Everyone's going to get bread, I think. He gets bread. He gets bread. He gets bread. And he gets bread. Everyone gets bread. And the shaman loved it. Everyone else was just mildly happy. Whereas the shaman was over the moon about it. Swordsman goes up to level five. Okay. All of a sudden, Monk goes up as well. That's big for him. Is the Shaman going to go up? Yes, everyone is leveling up. This is outstanding. What about the Crossbowman? Okay, that's huge. That is huge. Look at all those stat increases. And we've now got a daily caravan. Here it comes, coming from there with grain. Uh, we've done that, so we can take the 25 faith. Anything in here we can do? We can get the, the king. So basically that allows the king to walk around here quicker, collecting coin and faith a lot quicker. Uh, this one was like a hunting outpost, it said, wasn't it? 300 shards. We can do that. If we've survived this wave, we might be able to do that and see what that actually is. Oh. No, no, no. You stay there, sir. Uh, right. Um... We don't have any more stone to uh, to mine, I don't think. I mean, that looks like stone there. Develop, develop quarry add-on. Okay. Oh, it's a quarry. Okay, that's that's very new. A free path to the quarry is required. To automate the transportation of harvested stone, valid tiles are marked blue. Wait, what? Mine add-ons are an endless source for resources, but only one worker can work there. When there's a clear path to the mine, they can be connected by rail so that the worker doesn't have to walk back for each harvested resource anymore. That is incredible. How do I get a path there? Do I have to come down like that way? We can now go this way as well, which we're going to do. Oh, it's only a small one. Oh, that's brutal. I wanted some bigger plots so we can maybe get the, um, oh, the smelter and stuff. Oh, that's horrid. That is absolutely horrible. How dare you do that to me, game? Uh, right, I don't know how we get to this. It's talking about a path. We can't build a path. A free path is to the quarry is required to automate. Yeah, I, say, I I really don't know what it wants. Does it want us to re to do your path outwards like this? I guess maybe it does. <clears throat> That's really annoying because I spent quite a lot of uh, ore on that, but never mind. Um, right, okay. Yeah, uncharted territory here we come, but everybody's leveled up, so everyone's that little bit stronger. Um, we're still making plenty of bread, which is which is fantastic. So, where are you getting your stone from? Where's the person that's mining stuff? Oh, he is going in there. Okay, fine. So the free path is just for the automate, like the rail network, the rail link. So, but they can just walk there and go in the mine. Okay, good. So that's basically secures um, a regular supply of stone. To get a regular supply of gold, I'm assuming maybe you do that. Maybe you unearths... Um, sites under the ground and we need a forester to do that and we need a grower to do that uh, they are getting a little close and monk has already taken a hit or two swords he's just out the swordsman's range i think maybe i need to move the swordsman one space to the left just to help protect the monk a little bit more or oh, we're in trouble oh we're in trouble this might be a bridge too far. How much can our swordsman tank? He's not going to be able to take all of that. He's done. And there we go. Well, I mean, that was an improvement, right? We we, le we learned a couple of new bits. 
and we also managed to uh, to go one further day in it. But that, I mean, that kind of one day of progress from each run is sort of what you're going to have to live with if the the full game when it comes out is anything like this as all the monsters burn down the village and eat my villagers um but i really do like this game that despite the fact that the grind is a bit tedious and that is a real bugbear of mine i do think there's some balancing required um and it, look, it's meant to be challenging right i get that i don't want them to make it ridiculously easy and just give me loads of workers to be able to do every job um easily i appreciate that the micromanaging is a is a an intentional design mechanic of this game but i do think they can speed it up a tad okay maybe maybe uh maybe that's what they can do but day 13 69 glory that is a record we gained 333 shards we didn't quite get that hunting post thing which i should have maybe looked to try and unlock just before we finish there but there we go that is a look at super fantasy kingdom i hope you guys have enjoyed this i think this has got a lot of potential um no release date on it at the moment still showing just as 2024 uh, but thank you very much everyone for watching i hope you enjoyed make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel if you did and we'll see you all in the next steam next first video